What does it take to make a great photograph? What does it take to make consistently good and great photos? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you five things and yeah, probably an extra one or two that will help you to make better pictures, to take better pictures. But first of all, who am I? My name is Mike Patterson. I'm a professional full-time photographer. I've been doing this for over 39 years. I'm located here in Southern Alberta, Canada. I run a photo studio and I also run a photo lab. I, I do this full-time. I'm not some guy living in his parents' basement that makes videos. I'm not some guy that has a full-time job that makes videos doing, telling you to do this and that when he doesn't do it himself. I actually do this and I teach students all around the world. I mentor students all around the world and in my videos, I like to help you get better pictures. So if you like this video, click on the like button down below, share it with your family and friends and let's get into it. So what are five things? And like I said, probably an extra one or two that you can do to get better pictures consistently. All right. First, before we get started, I'm not going to tell you to go buy better camera equipment because better camera equipment does not always make better pictures. I've seen amazing pictures from really bad cameras. I've seen horrible pictures from the most expensive cameras. It's not the camera. Now, before we get into the other stuff though, you may have to buy equipment or accessories to do the pictures that you want to do. If you want to do astrophotography, you may need a better tripod or a tripod. If you want to do wildlife photography, your 50 millimeter lens is probably not big enough to do wildlife photography. So you're going to need a zoom lens, but that's not what's going to make your pictures great. Like I said, you can have great lenses, great equipment, and still take horrible pictures. So let's get into it. Number one, and this one's hard. This is probably the hardest one of all of them. And that is you need to be motivated to take the pictures. And this applies to you, whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, this applies whether you're a beginner or an expert. I have seen phenomenal photographers blow pictures because they just didn't have the motivation. They just got into their own head. They just, they just couldn't do it. I see it happen quite a bit. It happens to me. It happens to everybody. You have to motivate yourself. You have to give yourself a reason to take the pictures. And it's hard. Believe me, it's hard. When it's 20 below zero and you're a wildlife photographer and you're going out to take a picture, it's hard to motivate yourself to get out of bed, to get out of the warm house, to get out of a warm vehicle and do that. If you're a wedding photographer, it's difficult week after week after week to go out and take pictures and to make them look phenomenal. But you have to work on that. You have to give yourself a motivation of doing that because only by doing that will you actually start taking pictures and getting good pictures. Challenge yourself on each shoot to do something different. I used to do that all the time. My saying to all my students is your pictures tomorrow should be better than your pictures today. And that's how I applied it for 39 plus years of shooting that I always tried to make my pictures tomorrow better than what I shot today. And today must, must be better than the pictures yesterday. And by pushing myself in that, it really helped. So number one, number two, and I hate this one because it comes up with a rule, but learn the rule. And I hate that word of thirds. What's the rule of thirds? You divide your viewfinder, you divide your camera, you divide your image, whatever it is into three up, three down. And on the intersecting points is where you want to put your subject, learn it, learn how to use it, learn how it works. I'm not saying you have to do it for every picture, but if you don't know it, if you don't understand it, you'll have a harder time figuring out how to take that picture from being into eh good or from ain't to fantastic because sometimes the rule of thirds has to be followed. It just has to be. Sometimes if you break it, it looks horrible and people look at it and go, uh, this just doesn't make sense to me. It just, it doesn't feel comfortable. It just doesn't feel right. So learn the rule of thirds, learn that rule. Now, once you learn that rule, once you learn how to take pictures by doing it like that, then you can break it. Perfect example. Before Christmas, a lady came in with a wedding picture. One picture, 24 by 36, going over their sofa. It was amazing. It broke every rule about the rule of thirds, everything. The bride and groom were coming up after the ceremony up the aisle of the church. Nothing was planned. They were looking at each other, big smiles on their faces. Everybody that was sitting on both sides of the row were sort of turned, not perfectly turned, but turned enough that they were looking towards the camera because the bride and groom had just passed most of them. And the photographer took the picture and the bride and groom were dead center. I mean, 
dead center, top, bottom, sides, perfectly center. And it worked. It was an amazing picture. It was lit properly. It looked just perfect, but it broke the rule of thirds. Now, other pictures that they had, and I printed a lot for them, followed the rule of thirds. And they looked great. They looked wonderful. But this picture, it just worked the way it was done. So learn the rule of thirds. Learn what you can do to or with a picture to make it look more appealing and then go from there. All right, right on top of the rule of thirds, and this is sort of a bonus one. That's why I said there'll be extra ones here. Have your subject working into the photo and not out of the photo. So many times I see someone with the edge of the photo here and the subject is just like this. And I mentioned in a previous video about cropping, to leave room around the subject for cropping. Well, it goes like that with everything about your subject. You don't want your subject squished in a picture. You don't want your subject running up against the edge. You don't want your subject to feel cramped, to feel confined. You want your subject facing into a photo, leading into a photo. Give them room to move. It works just so much better. It may be just a little bit of room. It may be a lot of room, but give them that room so that they're, they're comfortable in the picture. All right, so moving on to the next one. Oh, it's just number three or four or whatever it is. Get your subject sharp. Now, this, this is a real misunderstood point. Everybody knows what it is to have a sharp photo, okay? Your subject is sharp. Your sub subject is in focus. But so many times, photographers don't know what the subject is. And I see this happen in everything. Family pictures. I just printed a family picture, beautiful family picture, really nice family picture. Unfortunately, the thing that's the sharpest in the family picture is one of the kids, and then the rest of the family is really out of focus. Not, it just doesn't look right. It's just not, it's just not. It, the, the whole family should have been in focus. I've printed wedding photos where the bride and groom are standing side by side, but the photographer, for some reason, focused a little bit off and the groom's a bit out of focus, but the bride is sharp and it just doesn't look right. Or a nature photo, waterfall last year, a person brought in here for printing, beautiful waterfall. They hiked into it in the summertime, really beautiful waterfall. They had the picture done and we're looking at the picture and they says, it just doesn't feel right. I says, well, what did you focus on? They went, uh, I don't know, because the waterfall wasn't sharp. The cool trees in the foreground weren't sharp. The mountains in the background weren't sharp, but they were sort of sharp and you didn't know what the picture was. You didn't know what they were trying to draw your attention to. So not only make sure your subject is sharp because you want your subject sharp, but make sure you know what your subject is to make your subject sharp. So figure out what you're doing and figure out how to do it correctly. All right, the next one. Set your exposure correctly. I, I, I know... This is something that we've gotten away from as photographers, but I see it all the time. If you want a great photo, having it really blown out because it's too bright or having it just too dark and there's no detail in the darkness is horrible, absolutely horrible. And I see it constantly. If you want to take your picture from being eh to fantastic, learn how to set your exposure correctly. If you're challenged with that, take a course. If you're challenged with that, have your camera bracket but learn how to set your exposure correctly so that your subject is sharp and your subject is exposed correctly. And the next one, if you want your pictures to go from okay to fantastic, take time to edit your pictures. Take time after you shoot them to correct them, to call them, to go through and figure out what ones you like. Because guess what? It does no good to present 4,000 pictures to a wedding customer if there's 3,950 that are absolutely boring. Just present them with the 50. If that's what your contract says, present them with the ones that, you, present them with the best one. There's no sense showing all your nature prints, and I see this constantly on Facebook. Photographers going out, shooting 1,000 pictures, and then they start posting all these pictures. Oh, look, I saw a deer. Oh, look, I saw this. Go through and call your photos and edit your photos so they look good. Now, I hear this constantly as well. 
while a true photographer should never have to edit their photos after they take them. Well, first of all, many photographers shoot in RAW. If you shoot in RAW, you have to edit your photos afterwards. Don't be embarrassed by editing your photos. Edit your photos so they look good. Ansel Adams, I hear this all the time. Ansel Adams never corrected his photos. Ansel Adams always... Ansel Adams had a dark room and he learned how to dodge and burn and he had different devices to make his pictures look great. And I'm sure if Ansel Adams was around today, he would be using Photoshop. I'm 100% sure. I'm 1,000% sure he would. Now, at the same time, learn how to make your pictures look like they're not been run through Photoshop and shot with a machine gun and spilt paint on and everything else. Make them look so that they're good, but edit them, clean them up call them just show your good stuff it makes so much more difference and the final one i'll shut up after this one do what other people aren't doing if you want your photos to look better than other people's if you want your photos to look better than what you were doing earlier get the stuff that other people aren't getting go out when the other people aren't going out when it's 20 below go out to photograph the fox when it's 25 above go out and i'm talking celsius here when it's 25 above go out and sit on the beach until you get that burn go out when other people aren't going out go out when other people are on vacation go out when other people are sitting at home watching movies because they just didn't think do the stuff that other people aren't doing do the stuff when other people don't have the desire to do and your photos will be better than other people's but do stuff that you've challenged yourself to do as well Example, every spring, migration happens. Unfortunately, every spring, the weather usually sucks at some point. So everybody that shoots pictures goes and hibernates for a while because the weather's too bad. Well, be the photographer that goes out when the weather's bad to take pictures. Get a cover for your lens. Get a cover for your camera. Get a cover for yourself. And go out when it's raining to take the pictures. You'll find cool stuff because that's when the animals look more natural. That's when the animals come out. Don't go out when it's 42 degrees above or 42 degrees below, and that's again in Celsius, because the animals aren't going to be out. The animals aren't going to be out in a boat and enjoying themselves. They're going to be hiding. Go out when it's the right temperature. Go out when the lighting is right. Go out for the times when, well, things are just more interesting. I hate seeing pictures that people shoot that are amazing pictures that they spent time and money to get to, and they're shot with the worst lighting, with the worst conditions, everything like that. You need to get out when the lighting is the best, when the subjects are most active, and so on and so forth. Now, if you're a wedding photographer, I understand 100% the issues here. I've done it. Put my hands up. (laughs) Hundreds of weddings where the bride and groom wanted pictures between 1 and 3, and that's the worst time for shooting weddings. But see if you can go someplace more interesting. See if you can shoot in different shade or different lighting. See if you can do. See if you can push it to just before the reception. See what you can do to get the better pictures, family pictures as well. Work on stuff that other people just accept as normal, and your pictures will be better than everybody else's pictures. And if you work on getting better pictures each day, your pictures will be better than the stuff you did yesterday. Follow those points and you'll get much better pictures here in 2024 and beyond. So we'll talk to you next time. Put down below some comments about what you like to do to get better pictures. And we'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye now.